for the last five years we've not grown any crops in the beginning of this year we start uh, growing crops maize beans pumpkins we also use some small water that we have to grow some crops like onions, tomatoes and small vegetables. There are also a lot of challenges that goes together with growing of crops. During the day it's a problem with the baboons and monkeys. At night it's a problem with the antelopes, the eland, the porcupine. There's a lot of challenges and sometimes when you're just about to harvest then there's the shortage of rain and then you have to start again from somewhere. It's more hard work compared to livestock because if there is a drought, you can move your livestock from point A to point B and even point C and D. Crops you cannot move. We don't fence our land because if you fence your land, that means that you'll be forced to graze your livestock inside the fence and that one can never work in our pastoral kind of lifestyle. Toward the end of 80s, early 90s, there used to be thousands and thousands of wildebeest moving or crossing to the park. But now you can only see like 30,000. They are going like down every other time. That means that the number of wildlife is really, really going down. If the government does not listen to the voice of the local community, there is no a clear future for wildlife. People will be able to fence off their land, the park will be fenced, and that means there will never be any migration anymore. If the government decided that they will listen to the local community, implement the land use policy, the master plan, that one will be able to protect the pastoral land, it will be able to protect the, the national park, it will be able to protect the urban land. That means the future of this place in terms of conservation will be so high because we'll still have the migration, we still have the wildlife, that will be good.